Hello, my name is Rachel McCool and I'm a Senior Research Consultant for the Systematic Review Team at York Health Economics Consortium. This webinar is about assessing the feasibility of conducting a network meta-analysis. A network meta-analysis is a statistical tool for assessing the comparative efficacy and safety of interventions when there is no direct evidence or there is insufficient direct evidence for the comparison of interest, or when there are more than two interventions that need to be compared. An NMA allows you to simultaneously compare any number of interventions as long as they can be connected in a network via one or more common comparators. The validity of an NMA depends on the adequacy of the evidence base, so ideally your NMA would be informed by a robust systematic review designed to identify all relevant trials of the treatments of interest. There are three key requirements for an NMA. First, you must have a connected network. This means that there must be a path from each intervention of interest to every other intervention of interest in the network. Second, the trials in your network should be qualitatively assessed to ensure they are similar enough to combine in a network. Third, you need to have sufficient data available in each trial for the outcomes of interest. We will address each of these points in more detail in the following slides. The NMA is usually driven by one or more specific comparisons of interest and often other interventions which are not of interest may be involved in the network to create links. The first step is to identify whether you have a connected network with the studies identified. In this example you can see that the FG trial does not share a common comparator with any of the other trials in the network and so remains disconnected. The rest of the trials are linked through one or more common comparators. At this stage, the FG trial would be excluded because it does not connect to the main network. The example that we are going to use is from a systematic review and NMA of Tadizolid for the treatment of acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections, ABSSSI, caused by MRSA. A systematic review of 10 databases was undertaken to inform the NMA to estimate the relative effectiveness of Tadizolid and established monotherapy comparators for treating MRSA-associated ABSSSI. 15 trials met the inclusion criteria and were considered for the NMA. This table illustrates the comparisons in each of the 15 included studies. From this, we can then create the potential network. You can see from this diagram that we have a clear path from each intervention to every other intervention, and we also have some loops in the network. At this stage, the potential network assumes that all studies are appropriate to include in the network and that all studies will report sufficient data for each outcome. Once you have established a connected network, it is important to assess the suitability of combining the identified studies in the network. As with the standard pairwise meta-analysis, a key assumption of network meta-analysis is that the studies do not differ in any characteristics that may influence the size of the treatment effect. A qualitative assessment should be carried out to assess the similarity of the studies in relation to the following. The methods employed and the risk of bias in the included studies. A sensitivity analysis may be considered if there's a great deal of variation across studies. The patient population and baseline characteristics. Are there differences in the baseline characteristics that could influence the response to treatment? This will vary depending on the disease area. Take disease severity at baseline, for example. In some conditions, greater severity at baseline could indicate that the condition will be more difficult to treat and may take longer to respond to treatment. In other conditions, severity may not have any bearing on the treatment effect and patients with more severe conditions actually have greater scope of improvement. It is often important to get clinical input at this stage to determine which patient characteristics are likely to influence the treatment effect. We would also look at the treatments used. Have the common reference treatments been administered in the same way across all the trials in terms of dose, frequency and mode of administration? You would compare permitted titration schedules and rescue therapy where appropriate and see clinical input to determine the impact of any differences across trials. We would also look at the outcomes assessed. Have the same outcomes been assessed across the trials and have they been assessed in the same way using similar measures? You would want to compare the outcome definitions, time point of assessment, statistical methods and analysis population used for each outcome. Some studies may be excluded following this assessment in the situation that there is significant heterogeneity that may impact on the treatment effect. Once you have established that it is appropriate to combine trials based on this assessment, the next thing to check is which studies report sufficient data for each of the outcomes. For binary outcomes, you need to know the number of patients in each treatment arm and the proportion of patients that experience the event of interest. For continuous outcomes, you need a point estimate, either baseline and final visit data or change from baseline data, along with an estimate of the variance. 
and for survival outcomes you need a hazard ratio plus confidence intervals or a p-value. The network for each outcome may vary depending on the availability of data. If we go back to the example discussed earlier of interventions for the treatment of ABSSSI caused by MRSA, this table illustrates which studies reported usable data for each of the three outcomes of interest. All the outcomes in this example are binary outcomes, so we need the total number of patients assessed and the number or proportion of patients with each event. As you can see from the table, clinical response at the end of treatment was reported by seven of the studies. If we take a look at how this will affect the network, you can see that we lose three of the treatments completely, tigacycline, telavancin and daptomycin, because none of the trials that assess these treatments reported data that could contribute to the network. Although three of the studies assessing lunisolid and vancomycin dropped out of the network, there were still three studies that did report this comparison, so the link remains intact. Based on this network, we will get estimates for each of the remaining five treatments versus each of the other treatments. For clinical response at the post-treatment evaluation, we have data from 14 of the studies. Only study 15 did not report data for this outcome. If we take a look at the network for this outcome, you can see that study 15 was the only study that assessed tycoplanin. So without this study, tycoplanin no longer features in the network. Data for discontinuation due to adverse events was reported by seven studies. If we take a look at the network for this outcome, you can see that we lose two of the treatments completely, tycoplanin and tigacycline. The link between lenizolid and vancomycin is now only informed by one study. We also lose the only loop in the network as the link between telavancin and daptomycin is lost, so this estimate will only be informed by indirect information. So now you can see how the networks vary by outcome depending on the data reported across the trials. The network developed at the beginning of the process assumed that all trials would contribute to all of the analyses, which is rarely the case. Each outcome should be assessed in turn. So in summary, in order to determine whether it is possible and appropriate to conduct an NMA, you need to ensure that you have a connected network, the studies are suitably similar for comparison, and there is sufficient data available for the outcomes of interest. Once these key requirements are established, you can begin to plan your analyses. Thank you for listening. For more information on network meta-analysis, please have a look at our website, yhec.co.uk.